Hey folks, welcome back to some acoustic lessons here. Um, today, this is what? Number 11. Lesson number 11. Uh, for the next four lessons, including this one, so there's some three more, um, we're going to be doing theory. Very basic theory, but to teach you why everything works. Okay? And this should be enough for you for a long time and I will decide later as we go or as you folks ask me for more of it. Um, and this will let you actually figure out how to build chords, why chords are made the way they are. Um, there are things that you are probably looking at and hearing. Um, if you look in books you'll see things that say like a sus2, sus2, or E13, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to teach you how to play all that stuff. And then, again, why chords are made the way they are, so you can figure out chords anywhere on your guitar. Because there are definite rules, and those rules are called theory. Okay? So we're going to do uh, lesson 11 and 12 on how to figure out chords using theory. We're going to do lessons 13 and 14 using theory to figure out um, what chords can and cannot be used in songs. So that if you're listening to songs, you can definitely say, okay, these chords are ruled out because um, theoretically it is incorrect you'll find a couple weird bands that might put some of that kind of junk in there, but probably not. So, two totally distinct types of theory, okay? So, with the beginning of this, theory, 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 okay? We're gonna learn the basics of what makes um, chords happen. In every chord that is a major chord, like everything you've learned so far, your um, A, your B, C, D, E, F, G, back to A. All those are major chords. And then if you have a, like a D, then here's D minor, Y. Or here's D, here's D major seven, Y. Here's D. D dominant seventh. Well, you want to learn all that stuff, <laughs> and here's what happens. So we're going to teach you why these chords that we've already learned, why they are made this way, and where else you can just start figuring them out. Okay, this is the coolest part of it. I know you think that playing is the coolest part of it, but once you have it in your head, all this stuff, um, it's amazing the things you can play we are not actually playing every single um, chord everywhere you can just because you can now you'll be playing all the lead stuff too because you have the theory in your head and those notes will just jump out at you because you already know all of this theory okay it's not about a bunch of scales will I teach you scales maybe one um, it's all you're ever gonna need it really is. A lot of people give me a lot of flack for saying that, but unless you're going to become a heavy metal, shredding, arpeggiating um, wannabe that plays for 13-year-old boys and a crowd of about 200 of those, that's after you're famous, um, there's no, re no need to learn all that stuff. <laughs> if you ever want to play for crowds that have women in it, you're not going to need any of that stuff. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear it other than other guitar players. Okay? So, this has goes all the way back to this old Do, Re, Mi thing. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Da, 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 da. Yes, the entire universe is built around that. At least your musical universe will be. I know it sounds like the very first thing you would play on a piano. And it is. Okay? So when we're playing a G chord, which is why I put it right here, 
and you already learned that, so you don't have to figure anything out except for, well, why is that a G chord? Okay, now let's learn this one scale. This is the major scale. Okay, we start by simply counting to eight. All right, and I'll show you later on the second one probably where we're going to run into some fumbles. And that's just because of the way that the B string is tuned because you have then back here. Then. Um, so when you get uh, the B string, everything's out of whack and cattywampus. I'll show you how to play it up there as well when the time comes. So why does a G chord work? Break it down. Okay, it's been broken down. Okay, here comes one through eight. We are gonna do a G major scale. Okay, one is right there on the E string on the G note, third fret. So you want to start on the chord you're trying to figure out. Okay, every major chord has only, 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 only um, three notes in it. You'll have multiples, you might have I'll show you what that means in a minute. Um, but it will only have three different notes, meaning it'll have a G note, a B note, okay? And it'll also have, let's see, maybe a D note. <laughs> and yes, it does, okay? So uh, G, B, and D are what's in there, but you're playing six notes, what's going on? Okay, here it is. Going one. And we're going to count to eight. When we get to number eight, we're going to be exactly on a G again. Okay? Major scale. Here we go. There's one, which is called your root or your tonic. I know, gin and tonic. But this is generally going to be called your root. You're playing in the key of G or you're wanting to figure um, all the notes in a G chord is what I should actually say. One, two. So... That skips a fret and goes up here to A. One, two. Okay. Now the next ones are pretty easy. One, two. Now we're going to go three, four, five. It's going to be on the A string. We're going to go back to second, third, fifth. Okay, for the next one. So you got one, two. Now second, third, fifth are going to be three, four, five. That's actually all we need for most stuff, but we have to finish it out to teach all the theory. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now the next one is slightly different. We're going to go down, down to the D chord, or the D string, I'm sorry. I make mistakes as much or more than anybody. One, two, three, four, five. Now when we go to the D string, we're going to start on that second fret again. But we're actually going to go to the second fret. Six. Skip one. Seven. Eight. Okay. When you get to that eight, you'll know you have it right. But if you're hitting it, you're at the fifth fret right now. And start and hit where you also started. Those are called octaves. Same note, just an octave up. Those are all octaves. You'll hear octaves played on bass guitar. Or a little funky music white boy. That's what that's how that sounds. Okay, so G has a root, meaning the actual note that the chord is named after, the G, and it has a three and a five in there. You're like, wait, wait, what's that mean? It has a one, three, and a five. So you do know the names of all your notes because you're supposed to by now. Okay, again, let's do the one through eight again. One, which is G, two is A, three is B, four is C, five, is D, 
6 is E, 7 is F sharp, and 8 is G. F sharp is also G flat, whichever you want to call it. You know that already because you know all your notes. Okay, so... play it backward and forward and everything in the world but again every major chord is made up of a one a three and a five again so that will be one so I have to write down I need a G because I'm playing a G now I need a three one two three okay I need one of those what is it well it's a B because it's A A sharp B one two B so I need a G and a B, and so that's a one and a three. Now I need a five. One, two, three, four, five. What note is that? That is a D. So I need G, B, and D. And that's how you figure out every chord. You just start wherever you can find it. If we had to start at A and play an A chord, there's an A. We need a A. One, two, three. Now we need that one. Four and then a five, so we need a A and a C sharp and a E. Okay, so that's the way things um, work here. So again, back down to the G chord. One, three, five. R, G, B, D. I'm gonna check it out. If you're playing right here, there's your G like we did. Here's your B. Just like we did this. One, two, three. They just happen to fall right in those spots. Now the next string down, if we think about our big G chord, the next string down is a D. We need a G, B, and a D. So here we have G, B, D. The next string is G, and it's not being anything fretted on it. So another G string. Next one, I have it fretted at the third fret. So I said D. So it's allowed G, B, and D. Next one, another G. So we have three G notes going on. And we have two D notes and only one B. If we want to change that note here on the B string, instead of a D, we can change it to a B by getting rid of it, letting off. Okay, so we still have G, B, and D, or G, B and D. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Shut your big brown eyes. <laughs> okay, so that's the way that works. Okay, so all your major chords are going to be that way. Let's just do the A chord and show you how that works and let you figure out the rest by yourself because you only learn by doing. The A is going to be the same thing and on the next lesson I will go up here and show you where the weird thing crosses over onto the B thing and we'll get all these minors and other things out of the way. So if we do the A chord, we start with an A wherever we can find one. I like using um, the low string or the A string to find everything. Okay, so if I was in C, I wouldn't start way up here. You could, but just find it. the note closest to down here. So if you were in C, you'd be. And it's going to look the same every single time until we get up around that B string. So um, you actually won't have to do it up there, but we can find all our notes way up here. Write them down until you just simply get them ingrained into your um, cranium. Okay, so A. Okay, so I'm going to start here. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you guys, what are the notes? We got A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. <laughs> um, what do we got here? G sharp and A. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight is one. It's actually 
actually it's supposed to be back here in G if you ever want to play that song. My Tacoma. No, <laughs> my Toyota. Um, so we need one, three, and a five for an A chord. Not an A chord, an A chord. So we need an A. The one, so we write down A. One, two, three. What do you know? It's in the same place. So you write down that note, which is C sharp. So we need an A, a C sharp. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, here's the thing to remember. That third note is always going to be just down one string and backward one. And then the five is always going to be just drop it down one string, move it up here. Okay, <laughs> it's little things like this you have to remember. Shortcuts, because you got to think on the fly later. Okay, so we got an A, one, two, we have to have our third, so we got a root or a one, one, two, three, C sharp, four, no, we just need a five, which is an E. So we need an A, C sharp, E. So if we go down here and try to make um, an A chord, we see how it works. Okay, we have the A string, we have, there's an E, now another A. Now on the B string, we finally get a C sharp. Okay, which is our third. One, two, three. Just an octave up higher. And another E. So we got two E's, a C sharp, and then two A's. Now you're thinking, well, you could put another E in there by the low E. Um, yes, you can. But that is good for like... But all together, for the lower notes, when you add those in as something that's not part of the original chord, like this, if they get lower and they're not just used as kind of a simulated bass, well then it gets really mushy and almost wrong sounding right away. You don't want to play like it because it sounds better. Starting with the root note being the A. It's just everything's going to sound better on acoustic guitar if you start on the one. Okay, so that's why it's made that way. Now, real quick, if we are on any chord, major chord, uh, we got two minutes and I'll explain this one how to make a minor chord out of every chord that you're playing is what it's called is flat the third flat means go one note backwards so down it's actually that way <laughs> that is up that is down <laughs> um, so many people will have it wrong anyway so if you're a and that you know that the third one two three is that c sharp one two Here's that C sharp, and you're playing an A, and you have to make an A minor, you have to flat that C sharp one fret. Instead of here, it has to go here. So you're looking at it. It's like, can I bend? I can't take it back there. So you have to reconfigure everything. It's like, okay, I have to get that note in, so let's get it, and then put whatever it takes to get the other notes filled back in again. So this is the correct way to play an A minor. Minor chords are supposed to be either um, sad or dark sounding. Like House of the Rising Sun is an A minor. Experiment with that. If you're in D, this note right here is the third. One, two, three. You have to flat it. Just one note. So you have to reconfigure and get. So flat the third. Mess with all your chords on um, flatting your third. And we'll come back on. Uh, I don't know, where can I sit down? On lesson 12 and grab the minors and you know just make sure you got them 
And if you don't, I'll smack you from here. Okay, see you on lesson 12.